on pattern. Something mm. struck me about that, guys. I don't I'm like, yeah. how does a dolphin get hydrated? Is it through the food? Right. This was the most interesting thing I've ever done in my life. Okay. I, I went to that dolphin research center and uh -huh. swam with the dolphins, and we had to give them water because they were worried fresh about water. getting fresh right. water. So where do they like, get fresh right, how water? How do they get it? That was my question. In the wild. Exactly. Wow. It, Whoa. Plants and algae and other things, other fish they eat, like it's all... Who knew? <laughs> Imagine that. You learn something new every day here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's raining. They go up and they just open their mouth. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> Lynette, we'll have to get you diving with the dolphins. Well, I've yeah. swam with them before. Okay. So that was fun. But I know. We <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys have a good one. Swim away and stay hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> Drink your water. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for choosing America's Morning Headquarters to get you through the mid-morning hours. Yeah, the Weather Channel is helping you plan for the big events ahead. We've got rain in the, the forecast, and we've seen that can cause some problems. Yeah. In places like Miami yesterday, but luckily no big severe threat. And yes. of course we're talking, right, exactly. <laughs> of course we're talking about the heat and it's National Pet Day, which I know a lot of people are celebrating. Yes, yeah. so we've got a whole lot planned for you to celebrate that today. Stay tuned a lot for you to talk about, um, <laughs> including, of course, the temperatures, which uh, is what everyone is talking about. <laughs> literally everyone is like, why is it so hot? If you could describe today's big deal and it's going to be so nice in so many places, except where the rain hangs on. And, you know, Felicia, we were talking about this yesterday. Oh, with rain like this in Miami, actually in a number of spots, look at the numbers. Pierce into North Platte, into Dodge City, 80s, if not even upper 80s, Minneapolis, how about nearly 80 degrees? 79 is our forecast today. Do you still have a snow pile in your backyard? Some of you might in the, on the shady side of your house or underneath a tree or something like that. Yeah, these temperatures will help do away with that. Cheyenne, we're going to 77. That'll break a record. Denver, here we go. We're in the 80s. You're ready to sit in those backyards. Alamosa and also Scotts Bluff, 88. Maybe that's even too hot, actually. You need the, the shade tree. Hopefully your trees are in bloom by now. Now, we are looking at today temperatures running about 15 to 25 above average and that's a pretty large zone the biggest departures Montana Dakotas Nebraska that's where a lot of the records will be today parts of uh, Wyoming as well tomorrow we expand that 20 to 30 degrees above average into Wisconsin and Michigan and then we start to bring a few more spots in to setting records there and into the Northeast as well 85 in Minneapolis Woo, it is going to be hot Chicago going to 80 degrees and then we look at the records to fall another one in Denver Kansas we bring you in La Crosse Wisconsin and Minneapolis at 85 degrees would set any records set way back in 1931. All right, what about the Northeast? Do we set records? Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to get all this warm weather, all the sunshine. Yeah, so this is the end of the week. We're now looking at Friday night into Saturday. We see our storm system coming on in. There will be areas of thunderstorm activity. We'll see a surface low down here to the south, and we'll keep an eye on that as well for any thunderstorms associated with it. For now, the action has been in the Northwest, and you can see the water vapor pushing uh, that moisture in out ahead of it. And there's still some hanging out back behind it, too, so I still think we could be a little showery out there here through the day today. Seattle to Portland, it might break up a little bit in terms of not being a rain all day long, but you're still going to keep the showers around. So we watch that snow up in the Cascades, pretty high, and then another system comes in. <laughs> so what a, no rest for the weary here. Here comes that next one, and that's the one that ends up crossing as we get into the middle of the week and then the end of the week getting into parts of the southeast. Things are pretty slow moving. The ridge that we have that's bringing all that warm weather over to the middle and to the eastern part of the country, that's blocking things up. So things are slow to move eastward. Rainfall be about up to an inch here, maybe uh, snowfall a couple of inches. But again, you got to go higher up into elevation. Let's watch tomorrow. We watch our upper level disturbance hang out. And then that moves east as we get into the end of the week. And now things with the jet stream finally shift. So now we start to see our trough take over, a little bit of a negative tilt. Uh, that's going to give us a chance for some thunderstorms here, especially over the middle, northern middle part of the plains, Mississippi Valley. Thunderstorms here will be possible. It is April, so we will have to watch for that chance of severe weather. Temperature is pretty warm out ahead of it. That's our story all week long, right? But that will be a factor and leading to the thunderstorm risk. Now, behind it, there's colder air digging in with that trough and snowfall in the forecast. So in places like Denver and Alamosa and other spots that are sitting on your back deck this week here, temperatures in the 80s, 
We've got snow coming our way, mainly in the mountains, but snow into Colorado. We also are watching for thunderstorms then on the eastern side of things, and that's going to be here on Friday from Kansas, Oklahoma, down into northern Texas, including Dallas and up to Tulsa. We're watching for that, and then we have to watch everything track east into Saturday across the south and east, and this front will be a change maker too, so it's not just a, like it brings just the rain and maybe storms. It brings in cooler temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> so it erases the warmth. It feels like when you warm up this soon, it almost feels wrong to go back to the cooler I temperatures. I know, I know. Like when it was so chilly Saturday, I was like, oh man, this is not what's supposed to be happening. It's already been warm, but right, exactly. April is transitional. April is tricky. Mm -hmm. Well, humans are not the only ones grateful for a break from chilly. I mean, when, when they like bad weather or, or even when they don't, when they react to it, that's funny. Yeah, exactly. I was talking to a all day. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, it makes a big difference whether they like yeah. that weather or not. Well, keep those pictures coming. Yeah to your car and when buying a used car you want to avoid purchasing a car that may have been damaged by rising water. Yeah that's right meteorologist Reynolds Wolf explains what you need to look for. Wow. Mm. Yeah that's definitely not what you want to find you're all excited about your new vehicle and then the next thing yeah. you know you're having issues, issues and find out maybe it was flooded. Yeah and so now we get into that season where we start to have river flood concerns and part is because of the snow melt. We've had quite the season up here in the Northern Plains. I know a lot of you in the Northeast were like, where's my snow? Here it was. <laughs> exactly. We're talking about uh, really impressive numbers here. Uh, in some places, almost double what you yeah. should see or, or, or even more than double. Yeah. So running a top yeah. 10, if not even top three or close to one, Duluth, Minnesota, we're getting there. Uh, so we have snow on the ground still. Now, a lot of it is gone. And you can see, but that went into the ground, into the rivers and streams, right? So right. it had to go somewhere. Um, but we still have a snowpack up there yet to melt. That's right. So especially, well, the temperatures are what's going to be melting this. But especially if you were melting it with a rain or a, a fog or, you know, a lot of moisture, that would be exacerbating the problem. But it's already going to be bad enough with the warm temperatures and that increased runoff. Right. So we'll be watching streams, rivers, the potential for rises, flooding is possible. You know, just looking at the, the outlook for the spring with the big snowpack that we've had here and up into southern Canada a little bit too you know that is a concern as we you know think about the Mississippi and its tributaries some of the rivers over into North and South Dakota as well yeah that's right especially if you live near say a creek that floods pretty easily and you know it you're probably getting a little bit of nerve a little bit nervous with these temperatures like this because when it is this warm it melts so quickly it's not mm -hmm. that gradual melting right. that you want it is uh, very fast and of course that causes very fast rising which could create all the problems. It's going to be warm and sunny, too. Mm -hmm. That's the other part of the problem. We've got temps 85 degrees in Minneapolis Ooh. tomorrow, uh, 84 in Des Moines. You know, I think most of the snow in Minneapolis and Twin Cities is melted, but there's still piles, I'm sure, around, especially those big push piles. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah no no doubt at all. I, I bet there are going to be a lot of people out at Minnehaha Falls there outside of Minneapolis because it's yeah. going to be warm and it's finally starting to flow again because there for a while it was very, very dry. Yeah. Now, where we have some of these flood watches could also run into some ice jam problems as yeah. well. That's a really good point. That's yeah. another concern as we get the melting. A couple of spots already up into major right now, and the forecast is for more as we get into the next week, especially getting down here, uh, rolling right along uh, from Fargo down to Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget our question of the day. It is a possibility where you are. It's important for you and your family to have a plan on what to do to help stay connected and safe ahead of potential flooding. We've partnered with T-Mobile to bring you some advice you won't want to miss. Boy, yeah, not, not at all nearly 90 like we have in Nebraska today. <laughs> no, not anywhere near nearly 90. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's kind of what we're getting across the country. Either you're stuck under this rain and yeah. dreary weather or you're you're getting nearly 90. The thing about the south is we have a reason for it to rain and stay cloudy and it's going to prevent all those, you know, upper 80s, near 90s. It's, it's like a blemish on an otherwise perfect yeah. forecast. <laughs> Although I will say, if it was not for this cutoff low that I'm going to talk about in just a second, can you imagine how hot it would be in places like New Orleans? That's true. If it's 90 in North Platte, people would be like, what is going on? That's a positive on? way to look yeah. at it. <laughs> look, I'm, I'm here for your silver lining. Let's <laughs> talk about it. That is right before I go to tell everyone about uh, the rain and the storms that you're going to be dealing with. And especially for cities that don't... Uh, motion yeah. stays in motion, however it goes. So yeah, I'm supposed to talk about what comes in to change it in the next system. And we can see that swirling off the coast, some of the energy there. But let's take a moment to appreciate how big this ridge is over the east. So we've got our ridge building just like this 
noses all the way up into Canada. That's why it is so warm in the eastern half of the country, eastern two thirds really. But we've got this low spinning off here, the upper level energy with that. We're going to watch this for a couple of days here in the northwest and then it all kicks east and then it drives all the changes, brings back the rain, the cooler temperatures, maybe even some thunderstorms. Here comes our trough. So this is a pattern. We have the trough coming in over the Rockies and you have still a ridge over the east and some warmer weather associated with that. This is a pattern set up for the risk of thunderstorms. And so we'll see out ahead of our front the moisture returning all the way up into the northern plains. You know, because we have such a big ridge and we see the warm so far north, we're going to see that risk of thunderstorms going so far north as well. So plenty of ingredients there to fuel the risk of storms. Then we go to the back side of the whole system and there will be cold air coming in. So there'll be snow to talk about. So as we get into later Thursday into uh, the weekend, we see some snow filling back in from Montana down to Wyoming and Colorado. Uh, we have to keep an eye on what happens as we go east. Yes, it's possible. UP of Michigan, perhaps Wisconsin, so much uncertainty to exactly what will happen at this point, but there's changes coming. There will be cooler air coming in behind the system. So don't think the summer like weather you feel today is going to last. It's going to be just, you know, warmer than average, but it is going to be significantly warmer. You can see this behind us. All the, the little red dots are indicative of places that could break records. So many. I mean, we've got some big numbers coming in. Phoenix, 99 degrees. That's hot. That's record breaking hot, actually. Yeah. When we're talking about places like, say, Denver, you're going to get to the 80s, the mid 80s. So we are really looking at that possibility of those records falling and falling in a big way. Yeah. And so it's it's spread. It's spreading like uh -huh. a wave. And we're right. going to see that. I feel like we should do the wave. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a wave of records that's going east. And by the time we hit Thursday and Friday, we hit some records in the Northeast. Yeah, maybe you're you're waiting for this. Maybe you're really looking forward to it and you're just waiting for that wave to hit you. <laughs> well, in Denver, the forecast, like I said, 84, the old record 80. The thing about when you break a record and you don't just break it by like a degree or you tie it, but you break it by degrees, that always feels so much more significant to me. It's very satisfying. You're like, yes, yeah. smash that record. Uh -huh, uh, exactly. We're, we're going to be looking for a number of spots. So it's a large area spreading again from the Rockies, Colorado, the Cowboy State will have some records for you. And then we see everything moving east with this heat. Des Moines, we're going to 81 for uh, you today. Yeah, those highs 15 to 25 degrees above average over the central portions of the country and the plains. But watch how that spreads. It is like kind of um, just like a warm, I, it, it's like warm syrup, I think it feels mm -hmm. like a hug. Keeps oozing. Uh -huh, yeah. It just keeps oozing. Ooh, that's a sticky hug though. <laughs> it's, like a five, it's like a three-year-old hug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very much so, yeah. So uh, the big ridge of high pressure is the reason why temperatures are warm up and we see that continue to evolve and build farther east by the time we get into Friday. So tomorrow we're looking at those uh, records possible for places like Wisconsin. 86 is your forecast. The old record 81 set back in the 1930s. So you're really seeing very old records. Broken. Yes, Minneapolis too. I mean 85 degrees. We just had our first 60s of the year this weekend. And yes. now we're already in the mid 80s. So the heat is on. We spread it into Michigan, into Pennsylvania, New York. Get ready, Massachusetts. You've got some record heat coming your way as well. We are zooming right past spring for a lot of these places and heading straight into summer. New York, the forecast for you, 85 on Thursday. That would tie the old record. Uh, Lansing, 81. That would break the old record of 80. So we see this spreading farther and farther eastward. Yeah, we certainly do. The pollen is one thing we got to talk about because we are going to be watching for the dry conditions that can contribute to some higher pollen, especially yeah. when the winds kick up as well. And I wanted, my, for some reason I'm slow today with advancing, but the pollen is high in places like Dallas, Chicago, and Atlanta. Well, booming pollen and the return of pesky bugs are sure signs that spring is here. Yeah, and we're not the only ones who suffer. Our four-legged friends do too. Meteorologist Kelly Cass has some advice on how you can prepare your pets for spring. <laughs> A lot of uh, activity in terms of rain around Wednesday, same thing. Although anytime you have an east wind on the east coast of Florida, there could be a rain shower. I'm just going to say that, yeah. But Thursday, you especially see that chance for storms uh, increasing there around Merritt Island, Cape Canaveral. So yeah, There's so much activity on the space coast these days. Oh, There's launches the almost every day. Mm -hmm. All right, well, my pick today going off to the west in the desert, about 130 miles east of Los Angeles. It's going to be hot here today, 97 Ooh. degrees. Whew, it cools down this weekend about 10 degrees. Yeah, but still, even 89 if you're at a festival. <laughs> yes. 
Stay hydrated, everyone. Yes, with some water. With water <laughs> and electrolytes, preferably. Let's go back to our question of the day. It is national something weather related. Like a lot of meteorologists have a radar yeah. or, yeah. you know, uh -huh. something Doppler. Yeah. yeah. I would name it a human name because I think nothing's cuter than a dog named like Scott. <laughs> <laughs> gonna stop watching this i know <laughs> oh guys <laughs> okay, welcome bye. back into america's morning headquarters hope you enjoyed that we will get you through the mid-morning hours that's right we're here to help you plan for the big events ahead the weather channel always here to let you know when we're talking about rain luckily no severe threat today that we're really mm -hmm. focusing on we've got heat records that are going to fall in fact so many that it's more like an, a whole album yeah, of <laughs> records i mean it's it's a lot from really almost coast to coast yeah really and then of course today is national pet day we've been sharing some of your pet pictures and it has been so fun to see them and how they deal with the weather so keep them coming we'll talk more about that but first let's get you into today's big deal that's right if you could describe today You might want to ditch your jacket on the way out the door because it's time to soak up the sun. More than 250 million of you will feel highs above 70 today. We'll let you know how long this will last and where 90 plus year old records could fall. Annette. 
plus rain and storm. Welcome into America's Morning Headquarters. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams alongside meteorologist Lynette Charles and Jordan Steele. Jordan, it's April 11th. Give us the 411. What is that? happening in Florida and the Gulf Coast over the next, let's say, three to four days because we've already had that onshore flow, flow in Florida and we had the flooding. We'll show you that a little bit later. This looks like an absolute mess, doesn't it? Let me point out some things to you. We have a jet stream that's going up way far to the north and then it wraps back around into the south here and then comes across like this. And so what's going to happen is, is this piece of energy right here is going to get pinched off from the flow or cut off, and then it just kind of sits and spins into the southeast. And so that's what we're going to be dealing with over the next several days. You can see the isobars associated with this. So see that isobar up there? Imagine this closing off on this side. And we're going to get this bigger area of low pressure that will then condense. You can see it condensing. And there's your low. By Thursday, there's your center. It's going to be on shore. So it gets cut off from the flow and has to wait for that next trough to come in and pick it up and move it. So what does that mean for you if you live in this area? It means it's going to be cloudy. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be stormy. Here it is drawn out nice and beautiful on our map tomorrow. You see it into Texas and Louisiana. And that low is just going to meander around, pull ashore as we head later in the week. But it does give us lift in the atmosphere. It does give us rain. We could see heavier showers here into New Orleans, to Florida, into the southeast. We still have a little bit of that onshore push with that ridge off to the north. But things are changing and moving. But it does mean that we are going to see more rain here along the I-10 corridor. As we go through the day today, Today. You can see that low starting to develop. Heavier showers are going to be offshore, but then they pull ashore. So flooding is possible here into Louisiana. Flooding is possible along the I-10 corridor all the way into Destin. And that flood threat does continue through our Friday morning into the southeast. And Jordan, it even comes with the possibility of thunderstorms. Well, and let's start early. And then it's like record scratch down to the 55 degrees. The kids these days even know. Do your kids know what records are, Jordan? Yeah, because I have a record player. Okay, so, good. So and I'm always like the old guy that's like, don't touch the net. Yeah, you know? All right, let's talk about uh, where we're going to be seeing more vinyl happening across the board here. And it is going to be downright hot. 70s and 80s. And the other problem is it's just going from like the cold into the heat. That huge extreme really can catch you off guard. Look at 90 in North Platte tomorrow. But we do have a boundary that's going to come on in and that's going to cool us off actually to below average. This is very spring like though when you're on this roller coaster ride with all these different temperatures. Denver tomorrow we could smash a record. The same in Pueblo, Colorado from 2018. Goodland, Kansas. We could crush a record by eight degrees. Usually you hit a record, but the fact that we're going to beat these records by four, five, eight degrees is just insane. And in Wisconsin and Minnesota, we could be breaking records from 1931. It's not only today and tomorrow, but also into our Thursday. Then we'll start to see things get knocked down a bit with our front that's going to be coming on through. Look at everyone that's going to be above 80 degrees this week. By Friday, 108 million are going to be feeling those 80 degree temperatures. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for this warm here uh, after we've had just so much cold in a lot of places. Thursday, look at that front coming through. Duluth feeling the chill, but Chicago, Detroit, Lexington, Louisville, we're going to be right around 80 degrees or higher. And the potential for records extends anywhere from the plains to the Great Lakes all the way here into the Northeast as well as we head into our Thursday. Binghamton, New York, we could tie your record, same into D.C., and as we go into Lansing and Madison as well. Potential record highs continue on Friday. We can't shake it just yet. We will still be feeling that warmth here anywhere from the state capital to Boston all the way down into the nation's capital. We'll be very close to a record here with a high of 86 and the record is 87. Lynette, if we're going to be that close, we might as well at least tie it, if not break it. Exactly. Totally agree with you on that one, especially if it's a so how am I going to do this? How am I going to figure it out? And if you really want to go, you figure it out and I really want to go. I said, that's it. I'm biting the bullet. I'm doing it. I tried to plan it so many times and eventually actually just got some help planning it which was the way to go. Let's have a look at New Orleans. Maybe this is your dream destination. I know my husband loves New Orleans. It's one of his favorite cities on the planet. It's going to be a little wet here, but that's okay. It's not going to bother you with all the gorgeous restaurants, the delicious restaurants, and the fun that's to be had there. Temperature sitting right around 70 degrees. Not ideal, but, you know, I don't think you should change your plans because of it. That rain will continue into New Orleans. New Orleans needs it. We're um, about seven inches below average on rainfall. 
really right along the coast here, the Gulf Coast. We are below average on rainfall. Mobile, Alabama is about four inches below average, so we'll take it. And notice that the showers, they don't really get in today. As we head into our Wednesday, that's when you're going to see the rain really start to come down and it's going to stay kind of an all day thing, maybe get a little bit of a break at night. But because we have this low pressure that's cut off from the main flow, we'll just see two, three inches continue to rain out. Down into Florida, South Florida, we're going to have a nice little area that we're going to see more heavy rain. And this is over the past seven days, but the same area could see more. We saw flooding in South Florida, the east coast of Florida. Still, we have the issues with that onshore flow, and we will see more rain start to come down for us here, not only from the Keys all the way up here into West Palm Beach, Palm Beach County, and points north of there as well. It gets really wet on and off as we head. And I think was it Thursday? Taylor Swift is in the Tampa Bay area. I believe it's Thursday because one of my friends texted me and they're playing. She's playing outside. Apparently it must be an amphitheater. I got to look it up, but I said, oh, you know, getting you'll just get there. You'll see a few showers and she was like, oh, no, it's outside. We're going to be drenched. So it'll be interesting to see if Taylor Swift is able to play because if there is some lightning, they'll probably have to shut it down on it. All right, Steph, and uh, severe weather. In the details, thousands of tropical butterflies are on display at the annual Butterflies Are Blooming exhibit, which is underway in western Michigan. Yeah, so joining us to share some of the magical moments to be enjoyed on a visit is Steve LaWare, Vice President of Horticulture at Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park. So thank you for being with us. And I know this is a temporary exhibit, debuted, but what, 30 years ago and has since become the biggest in the U.S. What can people expect to see? So they can expect to see um, so many different beautiful butterflies that we're already showing there on screen. Um, explain some of the new exploration stations that guests can get. I'm wondering if you've experienced this and you had any guidance for me. My nephew loves animals, obsessed with animals. Take him to the zoo and he's pew, pew, That's pew, awesome. so excited, yeah. loves it. Go inside one of these butterfly exhibits where you go in and they're all, yeah. he panics. Can't really? Do it. It's like absolutely not. I asked him the last time I took him to the zoo. You know, Ferris, do you want to go? And he's like, no, thank you. And we went on to <laughs> oh, the penguins no. or whatever it was. Do you have any tips for, you've seen people maybe or little kids getting scared going into yeah. these types of exhibits? Yeah, you know, it can be a little startling for some people, especially the little ones, you know. You know, try that with them. Uh, Steph and I at Noon Eastern have a, a show here called Pattern that is uh, climate driven. And we talk a lot about the migratory butterflies and how they're doing. Yeah. How are the butterflies doing in the tropical environment? Do we know how their status is or what their status is? Well, you know, it, it 